Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2021-22 season. My name is Dan and today I have finally got for you a Game Week 28 wildcard draft. I know you guys have been begging me basically to make one of these videos, um, so that's exactly what I've done. I hope you do enjoy this one. It is the first of two videos I'll be making today. My second video will be my team selection video, which will feature my free hit team, but this one is the wildcards team. So hopefully this is good for you guys. If you do enjoy it, please do leave a like and please do subscribe if you want more FPL. FPL content on your screens every single day. But further ado, let's have a look at this draft. So guys, what I've built for you today is a very, very generic team that I think will suit everyone. It's very flexible. It is a uh, low budget, so everyone can probably afford this team and you can make a uh, little adjust adjustments to it as you kind of want. You can upgrade players and stuff like that. And you can use this kind of as a base, but it's very flexible in terms of different strategies, which I will explain a little bit later on in the video. Also, this team takes into consideration all of the fixtures rescheduling that has that are going to be happening, you know, within the next few hours, probably it's going to be officially announced. But I, we already know exactly who's going to be blanking, who's going to have their fixtures moved uh, to this game week, for example. We know a lot of stuff now, and this team takes all of that into consideration. This is new information that has only come out sort of within the, well, since last night's FA Cup fixtures. So this is going to be up to date, super up to date for you guys. Perfect for right now for you guys to use. Forget all your ideas you had before. Let's go from the start. Let's start again. Let's go starting off. In goal with Dubravka. Not exactly a name that we've heard too much about um, in terms of FPL this season because, well, he had his injuries. And then, you know, Newcastle are typically known as a team who don't get many clean sheets. But a great thing about Dubravka is 4.4 million. So he's super, super cheap. Really, really cheap. He's got two double game weeks in a row. And also, Newcastle have been phenomenal in terms of clean sheets they have been so, in such good form recently and people kind of been ignoring it a little bit because oh it's Newcastle but you've got to remember Newcastle are under new management they've got a load of new players in their team at, at the moment they are looking so much better than they have done for years and years and years and I think it's time to finally actually consider some of their players and at 4.4 million for a player who's got two double game weeks in a row what a great um, goalkeeper Dubravka is he could even be a backup goalkeeper at this kind of price and we can spend a little bit more money on our our primary goalkeeper but for 4.4 million to have a player who has two double game weeks in a row is a really a no-brainer a little bit of a differential as well but I think this is a good one I think guys check out uh, Newcastle's clean sheets kind of um, ratio recently they are keeping so many clean sheets at the moment and Dubravka is making saves as well so Really, really good. I think there's going to be a lot of points for Dubravka over the next couple of game weeks. Definitely one to consider. Into defence, we've got Antonio Rudiger. Now, you guys know that we just have to get a Chelsea defender in this team. And the safest pick is Rudiger. He plays near enough every single game for Chelsea, which is particularly useful. As we know, um, you know, we've got this double game with Burnley and Norwich, which is phenomenal for Chelsea. That's not quite updated on the FPL website yet, but it will do. So we do know for certain that Chelsea do have this double game week, Burnley and Norwich. We really want a defender who can take advantage of it and hopefully get two clean sheets out of two over this double game week. You would expect that from Chelsea right against these two teams. So that's what we're hoping for from Rudiger. But going forward, we know Chelsea are going to have a few more double game weeks between now and the end of the season. They've got very good fixtures in general. So... Rudiger, really safe pick to go for, much safer than some of the other defenders. Um, you know, the, to be fair, all of the other defenders present a little bit of rotation risk. Thiago Silva is maybe the exception to that. But I know a lot of you guys are kind of talking about going for Alonso and Christensen and Chalabar and things like that. I wouldn't go near them. Just stick with the tried and trusted. These other players are going to be rotated and they are going to disappoint you. Rudiger is a safe pick. Thiago Silva is a safe pick. And maybe Reese James could become a safe pick. But I worry about Reese James's minutes in the immediate term just because he's only just coming back from injury. But in next in defence, we do have Dina. And this is a player which you could potentially upgrade to Reese James. In fact, it might be a pretty good idea to actually upgrade Dina to Reese James if you have that spare money. But for the purpose of this video and trying to keep things fair, Fairly cheap and fairly safe. Dina, super nailed on player at left back for Aston Villa. He creates a lot. He's still looking better than Matty Cash. I know a lot of you guys are thinking about Matty Cash, but underlying stats suggest that Dina is still the better pick of the two to go for. He plays in a more advanced position. He takes set pieces. There's just a lot more to like here. He's got a nice double game week, Southampton and Leeds. You'd hope for one clean sheet out of two for that. And you know, a game against Leeds, maybe even attacking returns for, for Dina because we know that Leeds do concede a lot of goals, a lot of chances. And Dina is someone who is heavily involved in those Aston Villa attacks. So 
we would hope for both clean sheets and assists pot potentially here in, in this game week. So very nice. Plus, a great thing about Dina is that he actually has a fixture in game week 30. So although it is a, a game against Arsenal, there aren't too many players at the moment. Or we, well, we think there's going to be just potentially four fixtures in game week um, in game week 30 just four fixtures so not many players to choose from we need to make sure we are covering that to a degree and Dina does that so that's the advantage Dina has over than over going for someone like Reese James for example but we'll move on to Cody next so I do think we definitely do need to get on the Wolves defense here Cody is again the safest pick from the Wolves defense we've got Crystal Palace and Watford at home now, we know how good Wolves are defensively. We look at these fixtures, we think, well, Crystal Palace sometimes struggle for goals. Watford always struggle for goals. Surely two home games for Wolves is going to yield at least one clean sheet. You know, you would hope that you could get two out of this one as well. So really, really strong pair of fixtures there. I do think it is pretty essential that you have at least some Wolves defensive cover in this game week. So that's exactly what we're doing. And then going forward, Everton, Leeds, Aston Villa. The fixtures look pretty good for, for Cody and Wolves going forward as well. So really nice, really nice price here. I think there's slight risk going forward into the future of Kilman and Sice maybe being rotated a little bit because, of course, we've got Willy Bolly who may come back into that Wolves defence. So, the, you know, there's a tiny risk there. Uh, the fullbacks at... Um, at Wolves is just, I don't know, a bit of a mess at the moment. I couldn't tell you who is going to start on any given game. We Particularly now that Johnny is back, who can play at left back and right back. We've got Semedo. He's not fit right now, but will be probably uh, reasonably soon. Uh, we've got Aitnori. We've got Marcel. There's so many fullbacks available at Wolves right now that it's basically a case of maybe just ignore them. Cody is the safest guy to go for. He's good for the rest of the season. Keep him in there. He's got that nice fixture in game week 30, a game week where not many teams are going to be playing in game week 30. We know Cody has got a game against Leeds, so that's really, really good. That's what's going to happen there. And finally, we're going to finish off the defense with Sharp. And a lot of people probably think this one is a little bit controversial, mostly because we're doubling up on the Newcastle defence. And guys, don't worry. I mean, Dubravka 4.4 million, Shah 4.3 million. These are just two really, really cheap players that for most game weeks, you are going to bench. But at the same time, don't underestimate the value of a Newcastle, you know, a Newcastle's ability to get a clean sheet. Particularly this Brighton at home game, I would be expecting a clean sheet here. And Newcastle players as well, they've got the double-double. So if you don't, if you're on a wild card anyway, you know, you can make unlimited transfers, you can get these players who will be in future be your bench players, but for now, they're going to be provide really, really good value over the double game weeks. And these are very, very underrated players. They're differential players, and they're going to get you ahead of the game a little bit. So really do recommend these kind of players. Shah as well, he seems to be back to his attacking ways. You know, when we look back through the years, we think of Shah as a player who kind of randomly makes runs forward. He loves to take a shot on. Uh, he loves to be a little bit creative and, you know, kind of play the ball a little bit. So Shah is a really attacking guy, good from kind of set pieces as well. And he seems super, super nailed on at the moment in Newcastle's defence. He's playing really well. He's, you know, back to his best, essentially. And I think it's, it's all good in the hood when we're going for someone like Shah for this price, particularly two double game weeks in a row. You can't really go wrong. You cannot really go wrong with this one. And so I think points are coming. Does pretty well for bonus points as well. I should note that. Into midfield, we're actually going for a three-man midfield. We're going to start you off with Mo Salah. Absolutely essential player to have for the rest of the season. He's got West Ham this game week, which even though it's not the ideal fixture, you do feel like even if you pick the perfect team for this game week, even if you're going for every single other of your players to have double game weeks, you're going to have Salah in there still because you know Salah can do just as much damage in a single game week as as every other player in the world can do in two game weeks, right? Um, so pretty crazy when we think about it like that, but Salah really is that good as, in terms of an FPL option. Plus, we've got a nice double game week next game week, and we do have to think a little bit with these uh, the, the, the team that we're building for a wild card, not just about the double game weeks for this game week, but we've got a double game week next game week and a blank game week in the following game week. And those are the three kind of main components we've got to think about when building our wild card team. But Salah, Next game week, Brighton and Arsenal. We're going to be captaining Salah next game week. And I should say that if you haven't used your triple captain chip yet, I know a lot of you guys will have, but if you haven't used your triple captain chip yet, Salah in game week 29 seems to be the second best time to use your triple captain chip. Obviously, the, the best time was a couple of weeks ago in game week 26. The second best is game week 29 for Salah. Or, or so it would seem at this exact moment. So yeah, consider that, guys. 
it doesn't look bad at all, so it's something to think about. We've got Rafinha next, who has Leicester and Aston Villa. Two fixtures, I think, that Leeds could get something out of. They're going to have a new manager. Are they going to have a new manager bounce? Are they going to be able to get something out of these games? It looks pretty good to me, so I do think that's definitely something worth considering there. I do quite like it. So, yeah, just, uh, just uh, I guess, be, be aware that, that it could be a nice double. And we're going to want some Leeds player in this game. And there's not really any other Leeds players that you're probably thinking about going for. This is the safe pick. He's on set pieces. He's on penalties as well. He's a potential captain option for game week 28 as well. If you quite like him, I see a lot of people going for Rafinha as their captain. So uh, the good, the fixtures after that look pretty good as well. And of course, we do have a lovely fixture in game week 30. It's not the best fixture in game week 30. It's Wolves away. But at least it's a fixture in game week 30. And that is in itself a bit of a prize, a bit of something desirable because it means that we, we might be able to field a full 11 in game week 30, which is not easy to do. Believe me, guys, particularly after the FA Cup results went as they did, it's not going to be easy to field a lot of players. So even just having a player playing for two points in game week 30, that's an advantage already. Moving on to uh, Ramsey here, uh, super cheap again. So this is a really nice super cheap player. I guess if you have the budget, you could potentially upgrade to Coutinho or someone like that. But Ramsey in the future is potentially going to be resigned to a bench a little bit, which is fine. He's a really good bench option. But Ramsey seems super nailed at the moment. He has solidified his, his place in the team. That's why he's kind of slightly raised in value from his 4.5 original value. Um, Southampton and Leeds, really, really good double game week, particularly Leeds. Are we going to get? Are we going to continue to see Leeds like conceding a few goals even though Leeds might score a couple of goals are they going to be conceding a few goals still probably probably and uh, we do want to maybe have a Villa attacker going into this game week and going into the next few game weeks to be fair because of course uh, Aston Villa are another team who play in 30 against Arsenal so another game week there where we got a player for 30 Obviously, some of the other fixtures are not ideal for Ramsey. You know, Wolves are a tough defence, so, you know, we're not going to like that too much in game week uh, 31. Arsenal in 30 is not ideal, but at least you get the two points. Uh, but Ramsey, in general, is mostly going to be a bench player, but you can take advantage of him this game week with a lovely double where he's pretty much scoring the same as, you know, 7 million players anyway. So don't let his price put you off and make you think he's a bad player, but... The fixtures in the future don't look great. This one does look amazing. So it's fine to have him for this cheap price for the du good double game week. And then you can bench him after. Perfect. Going into our forwards, we've got Harry Kane. Good fixture against Everton. Good form. I mean, Everton's actually one of Kane's favourite fixtures as well. He loves playing against Everton. Um, or often gets a lot of goals there. So that's going to be really nice. Again, we're looking for players who also have double game weeks in 29, which Kane is exactly that. Manchester United and Brighton in 29, which is, you know, is, a, is a perfectly good uh, double game week to have, particularly with uh, both United and Brighton's form recently. And Kane's form, he looks pretty good as well. So that's going to be nice. I, I know that Spurs are a little bit of an unpredictable team, but Kane is at least a good player. So that's pretty good. We've also got this game week 30 game against West Ham, which is nice because I like Kane. I like having Kane in the wildcard team because it gives us a captain option for game week 30. In game week 30, there's not really too many, um, because there's not many fixtures, there's not really too many captains to choose from. And Kane presents a really obvious captain for game week 30. Um, a bit of a surprise there that Spurs are going to be playing in game week 30, but that's kind of the information that we're adapting to, aren't we? Next up, we've got Jimenez. We know about Wolves' is good fixtures. We know they've got a really nice double. Uh, Crystal Palace and Watford, if anyone's going to be scoring goals for Wolves, whether it's a penalty, whether it's a goal from open play, it's probably going to be their trusty striker, Jimenez. Um, mixed form this season, kind of up and down moments. But again, if we're kind of trying to identify someone from Wolves to go for, the name on the docket is Jimenez, right? In terms of attack, maybe some of you guys are considering some differentials, but the sensible option is Jimenez. So that's kind of what we put in this uh, in this game week. Crystal Palace and Wolves, good fixtures. You'd hope for some goal returns in there. And then after that, Everton leads Aston Villa, more good fixtures that you would you would hope that Jimenez is going to capitalise on. And finally, we're going to finish off the attack with Armando Broya, just because he's so super cheap, another really cheap player. You could potentially upgrade him to um, a, a Che Adams. Uh, I mean, you could even, change Jimenez to a Che Adams potentially there if you wanted to I mean the other option is, is to go for someone like I don't know Chris Wood that could be a pretty good option or maybe a San Maximan if he's fit and available that could be a really good option I don't know if he will be to be honest he's still not training unfortunately uh, but Chris Wood maybe to go in the place of Jimenez or Broya something like that that could be pretty nice to get an, an extra double double game week player I know it's loading up on Newcastle but Newcastle playing well and they've got two double game weeks in a row 
pick a nailed on player, it seems like a, a reasonably easy choice. Um, but yeah, we've got Broyer in here. Uh, good fixtures, double game week this game week, a fairly decent double game week this game week. I wouldn't load up too heavily on Southampton because the appeal of Southampton previously was that we thought that they would be playing in game week 30, but the FA Cup results have dictated that Southampton will not have a fixture against Burnley in game week 30 anymore. That's going to be a blank for Broyer. That's going to be a blank for all your Southampton and Burnley players. So I wouldn't go too heavy on them. But at the same time, when we're looking for a cheap third striker, there's not really much to go for right now. There really is not much there. So unless you're going for like a literally a 4.5 million uh, forward, the next best, best option if you want to have an actual playing player is to go for Broya here. But I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, uh, ugh, I wouldn't be too surprised if you guys omitted a player like Broya. But it does seem like squad depth is pretty important right now with all the, all the game weeks, the double game weeks, the blank game weeks. There is so much crossover with what kind of players we want for each given game week that we kind of have to have all of the players. We kind of have to have all of the teams covered because we're going to want players from different teams in different game weeks. And you can't do all of that just using transfers. So we've got Broya. Now, on the bench, guys, it's a pretty expensive bench. I'm not going to lie. So Ramsdale, Trent, Saka and Kulisevsky. Now, these players are not going to be on your bench Usually, usually. No, they're not going to be on your bench. In fact, all four of these players are going to switch in in Game Week 29 and be starting players in Game Week 29 because all four of these players, although they only have a single Game Week in 28, they all have double Game Weeks in 29. So you're going to switch in Ramsdale, Trent, Saka, Kulisevsky, all of these really good players for a really strong Game Week 29 team. And that is going to look good. In fact, guys, if you look through this exact team, and I know you can potentially modify this team a little bit, but for this exact team, we have got nine nine double game week players for game week 28 we've got eight double game week players for game week 29 and we've got nine playing players players who actually have a fixture in game week 30 so we are covered before we even use any transfers we are already covered with nine doubles this week eight doubles the next and nine playing players the next game week if you you know buy an additional arsenal player for example next game week you can get to or maybe uh, maybe a spurs player that would instantly get you to nine double game weeks this week, uh, next week. So you'd have 29 in game week 29, you'd have nine double game week players. And also that would leave you with 10 playing players for game week 30. You know, if you make an additional transfer, and this is just using free transfers, if you make an additional transfer in game week uh, 30 after that, you can get yourself to 11. 11 playing players in game week 30. So with this exact team, and I know you guys are probably going to tinker with it a little bit. And that's, that's what you should do, by the way. Um... This team has the potential to have nine doubles this week, nine doubles next week, and 11 playing players the following game week. Only using free transfers. No hits needed whatsoever. And this is what I mean by it being very flexible. Because um, there is no free hits needed. You don't need a free hit. So if you guys only have one free hit or zero free hits left... It doesn't matter. You're not going to need a free hit because we are covered. We are maximized on all of the fixtures, the blanks, the doubles over the next four game weeks. We're maximized. You could maybe modify this player, this, this, this team with less players playing in game week 30. And if you wanted to do a game week 30 free hit, so for example, if you wanted to switch out Dina for James and maybe go for some more, uh, an additional Liverpool player or something like that. Um, and actually make it so there's not so many players playing in 30, that would be fine. You could free hit in 30 then, but you don't need to with this team as a base level, but you can maybe modify it that way. But I would actually instead recommend saving, if you have a free hit, saving it for game week 33, because there could be both doubles and blanks there. That's going to be pretty nice. If we've got both doubles and blanks at the same time, we can remove the blank players and add in double players. We don't know who's going to be blanking quite yet. Uh, we don't know who's going to be doubling quite yet because it is, again, going to depend on future FA Cup results. Game week 33 could be a huge opportunity for you to free hit. So this wildcard team allows you to save your free hit. You don't need to worry about it because you're already going, to already going to have all the double game week players you could possibly want. You're already, already going to have your blanks covered. And game week 33, when we don't really know what... You know, the, game week 33 is very much behind the fog of war. We don't know what's going to happen there. So we can use our free hit a little bit reactionarily, reactionarily there, I suppose, to try and cover that if things do go wrong. Uh, one other note on this in terms of chips. 
I know I said you could potentially triple captain in game week 29, triple captain Salah, that could be pretty nice. But you can also, using this team, bench boost 29. So if you were to bench boost in 29, it would look pretty good. So for this exact team, I know it could be different, but for this exact team, you would have Dubravka on the bench. He's on a double game week, so that's a nice, uh, you know, a nice bench boost immediately to have your both keepers on double game weeks. Good bench boost. You'd have Cody versus Everton, who you would say is pretty likely to get a clean sheet. But Cody, because the team is quite strong, you would end up with Cody versus Everton on your bench. Uh, you'd have Dina versus West Ham on your bench, which is not too bad. And you'd have Ramsey on your bench as well versus West Ham as well. Not too bad. Not amazing, but not too bad, is it? Um, you know, maybe if you've got you've swapped Dina for Reese James, for example, that would leave Reese James on your bench potentially here as well, making your bench even stronger. You could also use a transfer next game week we maybe even take a hit next game week to boost your bench even more to make it the perfect bench boost so like i keep saying guys this team is so flexible you can do so many different things with it and flexibility for me personally i, th I think has been the key to this season keeping things open keeping things loose and limbo you know, that's exactly what we like. Um, so that's what we've tried to do here. Uh, let's talk about captains very quickly, guys, because I know I've set this team up in front of you of how it would set up in Game Week 28. Let us let me tell you who I would put captain. And I would put Rudiger captain in it this Game Week. Now, one of the reasons is because I think this, this, double, uh, this double Game Week for Chelsea is just so good, particularly for their defenders. And this team doesn't have more than one Chelsea defender. And I would kind of recommend, you know, if you can possibly get someone like Reese James in, uh, possibly Thiago Silva, one of those two players. If you can get them in and you're happy with it still, then maybe try and do that if you have the budget to do that. But we would ideally want to maximise the amount of clean sheet points we can get. So if we double Rudiger, essentially turning Rudiger into two Chelsea defenders, um, maybe we get two clean sheets there. You know, we're potentially talking 12 points as a minimum, maybe even more when you add bonus points, potential goal returns. Rudiger is a reasonably attacking player. And I do think Rudiger is, out of these players probably primed to be the top scoring player. Now, Salah is also an option, so we'll put, put vice captain on Salah, but just because Salah has this single game week, I feel like you're not being aggressive enough if you're going for a single game week player. Salah could score in this game week. He might not score in this game week. Rudiger, on the other hand, I'd be reasonably confident that he gets at least one clean sheet, and I would expect two and bonus points if I'm completely honest with you guys. So, yeah, we go for captain Rudiger, vice captain Salah. But there we go, guys. Uh, hopefully, this all makes sense. Uh, I know I've spoken a lot about how to use use this team because I do think that is important to consider as well not just having the team but knowing how your team fits in for each game week and stuff like that hopefully this is going to be work out really well hopefully um, I can hear some stories about you guys using this wild card and, and hearing about how it turns out but also guys let me know if there are any key players you think are missing from this team that you are feeling really really doubtful about you really think that I should be included in a certain player in this wild card team and I've for some reason left them out or also if there's a player in this team which you think Dan you are crazy to be recommended this player you need to take that player out let me know as well I'll be super interested to know your opinions about that Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Hopefully, this has been the perfect wildcard draft for you guys that is both flexible and accurate to all of the most recent data that we know about fixture rescheduling, doubles and blanks in the upcoming game week. So hopefully, this is going to be really good for you guys, really helpful for you guys. If you did enjoy what you saw today, please do leave a like. Please do subscribe as well if you're new around here and you want you know regular FPL tips and advice and stuff like that. Massively, massively appreciated. And I will see you later, guys, for my own personal team selection video featuring my my free hit draft. It's looking pretty good, guys. Look forward to sharing that with you guys. Uh, but there we go. Thanks so much for watching once again, and I will see you later, mates. Bye-bye.